Deep snow, sub-zero temperatures and high-speed cars in the forest. This is Rally Sweden. The second round of the 2012 World Rally Championship is not just a Swedish event as most of the day one stages take place in Norway and this cross-border rally could be one of the most hotly contested events in recent history with four previous winners taking on the 2012 stages. Citroen drivers Sebastian Loeb and Mikko Hirvonen and the Ford duo of Jari Matti Latvala and Petter Solberg will all have their sights set on the top step of the podium. I was uh, quite often competitive on, on this surface, uh, but it's always very difficult to beat the specialists like uh, the Finnish drivers on, on the snow. Things have changed a lot since last year. Now I have a new car and everything, so, you know, I worked a lot on a car, on a test, so it's going to be very interesting to see now in the rally how it really works, but the feeling is very good anyway, so, uh, you know, I think we have a good chance to win it. It's going to be a long, tough rally, yeah. Uh, it will be nice to win, but as a team, it's very important also for the manufacturer's point. So, here we find the balance. And first time properly on, uh, on snow and ice, uh, we have to maybe get a little bit into the rhythm. We have done a good test. I think car is really good at the moment, and we really hope I could uh, push and uh, try to be there fighting for the podium places. And don't discount Norway's Mads Osberg. He finished second here last year. Meanwhile, this is the first time Danny Sordo has tackled a snow event at World Championship level in a mini. It could be a tough weekend for the Spaniard. The city of Karlstad is the home to rally Sweden with the stages situated to the north, including those four that stretch across the western border into Norway. Spread over three days, there are 24 stages in total, measuring just under 350 competitive kilometres. Rally Sweden is the first event where the all-new qualifying stage would be run. This saw all the drivers make one pass against the clock over the four-kilometre shakedown stage to determine the road order for the first day. The stakes were high and Thierry Newville was the first to find the pressure too much. The fastest driver would get to choose his road position first for day one. The slowest takes whatever position is left. On a rally where being first on the road is a disadvantage, the slowest crew would more than likely find themselves leading the pack and sweeping away the top layer of snow. Ford Jerry Matti Lavala was the fastest through the first ever WRC qualifying stage, so he was the first to choose his road position for Friday morning. We decided to take uh, position 17. The idea behind it is that to try to get the, um, the roads be cleaner in the morning. We were afraid to going in the front that it's, there is uh, snow on the top of the surface. So we believe when it's be clearing, it will bring up a little bit gravel, gravel on the top and giving a more grip. So that's why we want to start far back. The competitive action started with the traditional blast around the Karlstad Super Special stage, a head-to-head -head battle around this tight 1.9 kilometer circuit and an early glimpse of the stars of the WRC for the hardy Swedish fans who'd braved the sub-zero temperatures. If the fans were hoping for Scandinavian success in Karlstad, they'd be disappointed. Spaniard Danny Sordo claimed top honors in stage one to take the early lead. Rally Sweden back underway then, and with that crucial road order for the following morning decided, let's take a look at how the drivers would line up. Brazil's Paulo Nobre will lead the WRC cars away, followed by Belgian youngster Thierry Neuville. Henning Solberg is the first WRC regular. He goes 10th into the quicker men through the shakedown stage, all choosing a lower road position in the hope that the top layer of loose snow will have been cleared. Petter Solberg goes 15th with Yanni Matti Latvala 17th, followed by the Citroen drivers Hirvonen and Loeb with Mads Osberg in 20th. To the real action the following morning and the new look route of this classic winter event begins with the 27 kilometer Mitanda Force stage. It soon passes across the border into Norway, right past Petter Solberg's family home. His wife Penilla and son Oliver are preparing a warm welcome, along with thousands of Petter's loyal fans. They'll have quite a wait though, there are 20 World Rally cars competing and on this first event using the new qualifying system, Brazilian Paulo Nobre in the Mini has drawn the short straw, he's into action first and facing the loosest snow. A big challenge ahead for Thierry Neuville as well this weekend. The talented Belgian has never experienced the frozen Scandinavian forest before, so the first outing on studded tyres and what is his second ever rally in the Citroen DS3.
And oh, but this looks like Nobre is already in trouble. That is clearly a very sick sounding Mini and unfortunately the Mini Team Portugal driver is out just a few kilometres into the first forest stage. One Mini which is definitely still moving though is that of Danny Sordo. Terrific view from above and fresh from his impressive second place finish in Monte Carlo. His confidence will be high, although a restructuring within the mini project has effectively left the Spaniard driving for a private team. For now, though, he's focused on staying ahead of the chasing pack. Which Tanak has already impressed in his first two outings in a world rally car. The Estonian youngster, a star in the making. He's looking very ragged here, though. And a big slide again, and he's really off the road this time. A frustrating setback so early in the rally for the Go Fast team driver, and a classic example of what can go wrong if you get sucked into those snowbanks. Back on the start line, it's the moment the Petter Solberg fans have been waiting for. The hero is back on the Swedish snow in a full works team for the first time since 2008. 380 studs on each Michelin X ice north tyre biting into the ice. The Ford man off into Mitanda's force. So while Norway's finest has just left the start line in Sweden, one of a number of Swedish drivers competing is already across the border in Norway in this epic stage. Patrick Sandell is a former junior WRC champion and finally six years later the popular Swede is getting his shot at WRC power in a mini John Cooper works. It's an impressive getaway too. Patrick second fastest through so far. Yeah it was, it was a, a good stage. I maybe a bit too careful on, on some sections but first stage I enjoyed it. Like hell, it was fantastic to drive this car and just now build it step by step. Back in the stage though, Petter is flying and he should know these roads better than most as he's rapidly closing on his home where his family and fans are about to welcome him. <laughs> Terrific support as ever for Solberg and he's clearly taking to this Ford Fiesta RS with impressive speed. Petter has smashed Sordo's time, an incredible run for the Norwegian. Fantastic stage, you know, fantastic. And, uh, yeah, I think they will beat me behind, so uh, it gets me much cleaner road all the time, but I'm very happy with my stage. A lot of people out there, so hello to everybody on the farm, you know. Very nice, uh, very nice when I came down there, fantastic. Gary Matti Latvala selected the 17th spot in the start list, remember, after that pre-event qualifying. So we'll soon find out if Ford have got those tactics right. As Petter mentioned, the grip has definitely been improving with every passing car. But with Hirvan and Loeb and Osberg still to come, will it be enough? Latvala is on full attack and he is quicker than Petter. Yuri Matti in fine form, but his time could still be under threat from this man between Latvala and his compatriot Mikko Hirvonen. They've won every rally Sweden for three years running, teammates for the last four years. They're very much rivals now, and Hirvonen is incredibly quick, but it's not quite enough. He's eight tenths of a second slower than Latvala. Back in the stage, Sebastian Loeb has had a frustrating start to the morning. A last-minute decision to take two spare tyres in service has resulted in a 10-second penalty after checking out late. The eight-time world champion, though, is not one to dwell on such incidents. He's in full flight in stage two. Not quite a match for Latvala and Hirvonen, but write this man off at your peril. Sebastian, obviously a three-minute gap there. Late out of service, what was that all about? Ah, we took a uh, little bit too much time to, to change something on the car, and uh, so we had this 10-second penalty. Matt Sosberg famously finished second in Sweden last season and played some interesting tactics during qualifying to ensure he starts behind the leading runners. The Norwegian is absolutely flying on home soil and looking at Latvala's time there, there's not much in this. In fact, there's absolutely nothing in it. Osberg sets an identical time to Latvala, and that's enough for the four man to take the overall lead.
Osberg flying again in Sweden. Latvala now lies in second place, just under two seconds back, with Hirvonen and Petter Solberg still right in the mix. Loeb currently lies in sixth place after that penalty. We have an all Scandinavian top four in Sweden. There's just five seconds between them, and the battle in the frozen forest continues after this break. Welcome back to Rally Sweden, where it's all very tight between the top four and the all Scandinavian battle has stayed in Norway for stages three and four. Out of the forest now and into this more open country. The roads are bumpy and more narrow. But unfortunately for Mats Osberg, with little testing in such conditions, the Norwegian is struggling to maintain his early pace. And fellow Ford driver Yadimati Latvala takes little time to capitalize. The 26 year old won his first ever rally here in 2008 and is a proven force on ice and snow. With another strong time in the 20 kilometers of stage three, the Finn moves past Osberg to take over the top spot. Ominously for the Scandinavian quartet leading the way, though, the all conquering Sebastian Loeb is beginning to find some form. The Citroën star may not have won in Sweden since 2004, but he did win Rally Norway three years ago, and his precise style is well suited to these more technical roads. Lowe claims the stage win in the first pass through Opeka. The latest young driver to come through the Citroën ranks, meanwhile, is already proving what a natural talent he is. Thierry Neuville, in just his second rally in a World Rally car, and his first on ice and snow, sets an incredible third fastest time in stage four. Like Latvala, Petter Solberg has moved ahead of his struggling compatriot Osberg. He's just four seconds off the lead after stage three. Here in the Kirkener test, the former world champion is hunting down the new leader. Oh, but he's got that corner all wrong. Proof, if needed, how much more challenging these tight, bumpy roads are. Petter just getting his lines slightly wrong there, and that is a really frustrating setback. Petter, the first of the front runners to slip up then, but two times Sweden winner Mikko Hirvonen is excelling in the DS3. The Finn sets the fastest time in stage four, and he's up to second following Solberg's slip up. Another reshuffle at the top of the leaderboard then. Lapala is our new leader with Hirvan in second and a frustrated Petter Solberg slipping down to fifth. It's back into the forest for stage five and the first pass through the 21 kilometers of Thingskolken. Fresh from taking the lead for the first time, Lapala's not quite happy with the balance of the Fiesta at the moment. After crashing when leading the rally in Monte Carlo, the Finn is not about to make the same mistake twice and he resists a maximum attack for the time being. With Latvala hesitating, this time it's Hirvonen who could benefit. Back on the blisteringly quick flowing forest roads that Miko loves, we could see the lead change hands for the third time here. Well, there is Latvala's time and I think his compatriot should comfortably beat it. Yes, Hirvonen's turn to take over the top spot. It's really building into an incredible battle. Great stage time in there. You're getting the confidence now. Yeah, a little bit. I have to just stop messing around and really gas it and, you know, just attack, so then it works. Latvala's run out front was a brief one. He's now 2.9 seconds behind Hirvonen with Osberg still third. Further back, Henning Solberg and Evan Brynilsson take Norway's tally up to four in the top ten. But what a morning it's been as the drivers take a break at the remote service at Kongsvinger in Norway. 
after four years as teammates at Ford, Mirko Hirvonen and a Citroen is battling with Yari Mati Latvala in the Fiesta. Are you a bit surprised that Mikko's pretty quick and he's leading the rally and first time in his Citroen? Uh, I was expecting that. I was expecting. He knew how our car had to be set up for the, for the, for the snow conditions. So, of course, he took that information to Citroen and uh, did it there. So, I wasn't, I wasn't surprised. It. I was expecting that. Yari Matti said he wasn't surprised that you were leading the rally. Are you a bit surprised then? I know after the test and after the rally I did, the car is very, very good and, and it's, it's going to be fast. But So... Yeah, I knew we have a chance to fight for it, but uh, I don't know, maybe a little bit surprised. It's soon time to head back out for the afternoon loop. Conditions are still fine, but there's a lot of gravel appearing in some areas. Finding the correct line will be vital in these repeated passes. Swedish sensation Patrick Sandell in his first ever assault on the WRC has been working hard all morning in the mini. He's looking a bit ragged here. Oh, and Patrick ploughing into the snowbank, the Swede. Very lucky to get away with that one. Russia's Evgeny Novikov has always been a man to watch, known for pushing to the absolute limit. And this year in Sweden, it's no different. Here he comes and... That Fiesta all out of shape as well. Back at the front, and after losing the lead to his former Ford teammate, Yanimati Latvala is pushing as hard as he can to reel in Mikko Hirvonen and in the Citroen ahead of him. See how rutted the road is looking. But despite that, Yari certainly looks more comfortable in the car this afternoon. battle we have on our hands. Neither driver wants to lose face here in Sweden. And Mikko is doing everything in his power to keep that Citroen ahead of his former teammate. Again, you can see the gravel starting to show through on the stage here. It could be costing the Finns some time. Yeah, it is very close. Very close fight and uh, feels like the car is now it's we have a lot more gravel and it feels like it's understeering a lot so took it a little bit easy and steady but uh, you know it's it's not too bad not too bad. There is one corner in stage seven though that's beginning to catch some out. A really lucky escape for Danny Sordo there. As he powers the John Cooper works back through the snowbank. We've already seen it's been a lively day for Oit Tanak, and he too coming close to disaster at that same corner. It hasn't been the best of starts for Sebastian Loeb in Sweden after that time penalty this morning, and he's approaching the same corner. He needs to watch out, but he's off the road too. A rare mistake from the world champion. He's stuck fast. Take another look, exactly the same mistake as Tanak. And Sebastian has got going again thanks to the help of the nearby fans, but it's cost a lot of time, and that's a disaster for the world champion. I lost the rear in the left, so the car went too much sideways. I couldn't throw it back in the right direction for the, the right hand corner behind, so I went in the, in the snowbank and we were stuck on that. And look what that has meant for the world champion with almost two minutes lost. He doesn't even appear in the top ten. His hopes of a second Sweden win seemingly in tatters already. The all finished fight at the front continues. Hirvonen still has the edge. And this intriguing battle between the two masters of the Swedish forest is just too close to call. Can Hirvonen hold on or will his young rival fight back? The final action from day one in Sweden continues in a few minutes. We're in Sweden for the second round of the 2012 FIA World Rally Championship, where the Super 2000 category is also running. Time now to get you up to speed with the SWRC. 
Irishman Craig Breen claimed the first category win of the year in Monte Carlo, but on just his second ever outing on this specialised event, the winner of last year's WRC Academy has not risked an all-out battle with the early leader. Because that man is local hero Per Gunnar Andersson. The Swedish star has competed on his home event seven times and his experience has shown. The Proton driver has already pulled out a huge lead in the SWRC standings. Anderson's compatriot Pontus Tiedemann has ensured there are two local drivers in the podium positions after the opening day. A fine start on the Swedes' SWRC debut. It's been a rather more frustrating outing for reigning PWRC champion Hayden Padden, meanwhile. Struggling on his first outing in Sweden, the Kiwi star has had an eventful day and currently lies in sixth place. So it's Anderson with that dominant lead of more than two minutes over Breen, with Tiedemann in third place and Saudi Arabian driver Yazid Al Raji in a fine fourth. Back to the WRC runners now, and it's been a frustrating day so far for talented Finn, Yari Ketamar. Already running down in 13th place, his afternoon was about to get even worse. Yari off the road and out of the running. So the conditions and high level of competition continue to catch out some of the world's finest drivers then. We saw Danny Sordo have a brush with disaster earlier, but he's still in fifth place. But he won't be much longer. Sordo off into the snowbank. The Spaniard clearly struggling and the drama just keeps on coming on these Norwegian roads of day one. Something clearly amiss inside that mini and Danny going nowhere for now. Quickly out to check at the front of the car, but something seriously amiss. And after his incredible turn of speed in Sweden last year, Mads Osberg has become increasingly mystified by his lack of pace. A brake problem is the latest source of frustration for the Norwegian, and he slips further adrift of the leaders. Danny, meanwhile, will go no further on day one. The temperature become really up, and uh, we thought it was the, the snow in the front. Of, of, the, of the radiator and he didn't have this was the one of the belts for the cooling was gone and uh, the car is so hot and we stop Sebastian Loeb though has begun his long fight back after his earlier off he makes up four places to finish the day seventh on the leaderboard The big talking point on this first afternoon, though, has been about tyres. With more and more gravel appearing for the later runners, the studs are literally being ripped from the Michelin's rubber. Peter Solberg is still getting huge support in the stages, and with the fastest time to finish the day, another Solberg attack is on the cards tomorrow. Yarimati Latvala, meanwhile, is still thriving after those earlier setup tweaks. Despite his deteriorating tyres, the finish still on the attack and in the second pass through Thing Skogen, Ford's number one charges back into the top spot. Relegating Hirvonen back into second. Like his compatriot, Miko is really struggling for grip in his increasingly studless tyres, but for some reason it's affecting the Citroen man even more. By the end of stage nine, he loses 15 seconds to the new leader. Kievenen is understandably a frustrated man. After a second pass through the Karlstad Super Special, this is how things stand. Kievenen's late problem sees him lie 16.8 seconds behind Latvala, while Petter Solberg is up to third at the expense of Mads Osberg. It's been a relentless battle for the top two drivers. Oh, well, it, it looks quite good now. It was very close before the, before the, the end of the... Um, before the Dorsby, the Dorsby stage, uh, for sure, Mikko and uh, will be pushing hard. Better is not so f uh, far either, so I need to keep going as I have done today. There is no no time to relax. 
you know, disappointed about about the last stage. Otherwise, we had a really good day and we were in a, in a good fight with Jari. But now, in the last one, just didn't have any traction anymore from from the tires. So I just lost lost a lot of time because of that. I'm definitely, I'm not gonna save the tires. I mean, we have to look look the data with uh, with the engineers and see if we can find some help some help from the setup to help help me save the tires. But otherwise, I just have to go flat out and, and hope for the hope for the best. What a first day it's been, and there are still two more to come. We're back in Sweden's farmland region tomorrow, so make sure you join us again for the day two highlights.